Look at the perfect formation on them glorious bastards. Everybody calls them bird brains, but I think they're a lot smarter than you give them credit for. They're smart enough to go south for the winter. They're going south right now. <laughs> they're pointing exactly south. You know what that means? That means it's time for me to experiment with rocket stoves. Hey buddy, almost time for heat. Gotta get that heat going soon. Let's go in the workshop. Well, I don't know why, I don't know why I did that, but I put a giant log in there. Now, this would be awesome because everybody claims that uh, rocket stoves, you have to feed them f frequently, which is true. You do, you sh when you put smaller stuff in there, you do have to feed it more frequently. Unless you have a batch box with a big uh, capacity. But, I see that little one in there? I think it's helping a lot. But anyway, I'm going to be putting one small one in there every now and then. Just to keep fuel the fire and keep the big one going. Hopefully, I don't know what's going on. It might not need it, but I noticed it slowed right down. And a lot of people would love to know how to slow down their rocket stoves. That's the thing about rocket stoves, is they burn fast and they burn the fuel pretty quick. But... <laughs> Uh, what I've got going on here is some sort of a slow burn with still clean as a whip. It's burning slow, but it's still hot it's still hot and clean. There's no smoke coming out of this chimney here. And the, t the temperature that I'm used to, 200 degrees at the exit. One, it's, there's exactly 200 degrees at the exit. This is what I'm used to on my other stove. I'm used to getting 200 degrees at the exhaust. But when you put smaller chunks in here, it burns faster, hotter, more surface area on the fuel. And uh, right now, my oven's slowed right down. Everything's slowed right down, but my oven's just barely at 300. Just barely. So I don't recommend uh, putting this big chunk in for, uh, for, for cooking. I don't recommend doing this if you're trying to cook something because if you're trying to cook something you want more than 300 degrees I think 350 like I had before is almost ideal for baking maybe maybe 375 depending on what you're cooking but um, I had experimented with this I had experimented uh, putting it across because I wasn't sure because this huge feed chain well it's not huge but it's a bigger cross-sectional area than my pipe so uh, I, it is a six inch square and it is six inch pipe but the square has more cross-sectional area that gives me a little bit more room for fuel which is cool I guess I can fit this giant chunk in here like this but it's going slow, and uh, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to how slow it's going. It is going clean. It is burning clean. That's the exhaust. That's the exhaust pipe. But I don't know. It's going really slow. Look, there's like a, oh, there's like some blue gasification going on over here. What the frig? Anyway. I can smell the I can smell the paint, so I'm not gonna get too close because I'm trying to bake this paint off of here. But I figure when I seal up this, when I seal up that, I get the, the lid's not sealed either. It needs to be welded probably today by the welder. Get that sealed up. Put an insulated riser in. 
and it can only get awesomer from here. Oh, I got to be careful not to trip on this because that that's holding my front door closed. Now, here's a piece of uh, cedar bark. I'm going to drop it in on a 